You're very welcome to the fine city of Coventry. We'll be the city of culture next year. So after that, Mick Hennessy, in association with John Pegg, bringing big time boxing back to the city. It's been 10 years since Rendell Munro fought a WBC super bantamweight eliminator in this city. So the Sky Dome is gonna have a fantastic night of boxing. Championship boxing, of course, you can see this beautiful belt in front of us, but these two gents are gonna compete for the vacant British light heavyweight title. But of course, it's a packed bill, a fantastic undercard. Derbies including Jordan Cook against Michael Green, there's Ishmael Ellis against Sean Cooper, River Wilson Ben, Lee Gunter, and then a bill that includes the likes of Isaac Chamberlain, who of course wants to make a big statement in the cruiserweight division as well after beating Luke Watkins last time out. Michael Hennessy Jr. on the bill, and we'll see shortly as well, Sam Eggington will join us here at the top table. But of course, it's a great opportunity for lots of local fighters to bring their fan bases to the Sky Dome in Coventry. If anyone is unaware, tickets still available from the venue, from the fighters themselves, and of course from Hennessy Sports. But it is fantastic, live on Channel 5, in association with Infinitum and Ladbrokes. Massive showcase for all these young fighters to show what they're all about and take that next step in their journey. We've got not only a, an esteemed top table here as well, which we'll get to in just a short while, but of course, the fighters that are in front of you now, what an opportunity for all of them. And, and again, with so much action and so much that we can look forward to, we've got Tom Silcox. And Tom, again, you're gonna be in action against Des Newton. So Tom, try and put into words what it's gonna be fighting at the Sky Dome for you. Extremely appreciative of this um, this opportunity. Um, put on a good, solid performance. Um, he's definitely going to know that I've uh, left no stone unturned uh, for this fight. Been putting in the graft, and uh, to be part of such a massive show, um, you know, on on a, a different stage, a different ring under different lights. I'm definitely going to uh, show what I'm made of, and um, I appreciate this opportunity. So thank you to everyone that's been involved. Well, lots of Midlands, sorry, sorry Tom, lots of Midlands fights, of course, are in action as well. And hometown boy, Luke Beasley, again, Coventry is going to be in the forefront. It's an opportunity now. We see all the five cities around the UK. Is this an opportunity then for Coventry to show what it can do? Yeah, it's, um, it's good to see big boxing back in Coventry. Um, we're excited to get back in there and return to the ring and put on a good show, show everyone what I'm about. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Another unbeaten fighter as well on the table below is Lewis Coley, super featherweight from Birmingham. And again, Birmingham's had a bit of attention, obviously some stellar names. We mentioned Sam Eggington before, and obviously the stellar Birmingham names on this card as well. And again, it's not too far down the road. A big fan base, a, a big opportunity for everyone to do a few tickets. You're looking forward to this one as well, Lewis? Yeah, I can't wait. I'm not used, I'm not used to doing a lot of this speaking. <laughs> I'm, just, uh, I'm just here ready to fight. <laughs> Of course, I mentioned before that obviously we have some Midlands derbies, we've got Coventry derbies and we've got a great main event as well. But we do have at the table as well, we've got uh, Jordan Cook. Jordan, again, we're, we're looking at this and we're looking at uh, the opportunities that obviously fighters have. And again, this one, it is an all Coventry derby against Michael Green. So give us your thoughts ahead of this one. Yeah, um, it's a fight I really can't wait for. I uh, spoke to my manager John Pegg at the start of the year. Um, and he said there was going to be a big show in Coventry, which is going to be on Channel 5. And the idea was going to be maybe to have another tune-up fight after my win in November. And uh, as soon as it was going to be in Coventry, I thought, why not have an all Coventry clash with Michael Green? I knew we were both the same way. It's great that big time boxing's back in the city. And uh, yeah, so he come back to me the week after saying Green's accepted the fight and here we are. Three weeks ago, can't wait. Now obviously, uh, you know, you, you're bringing certain things to the table. South Ball, you've got just a couple of blips on your record. Slightly more experienced as a pro, but obviously he's got a few years advantage on you in terms of age-wise. So, how do you see it's going to go on the night? Um, I think it's going to be a good fight. I say, I see it as a, a real 50-50 fight. To be honest, as I said, you know, I could have just, you know, took another another tune up fight. So I had my first fight back in November. Um, yeah, but it's you know it's a great fight for the card. I believe that people from Coventry are in for a treat. It's going to be a great fight. I'd like to welcome to the top table Sam Eggington, of course, who you all know as well, with a nice shiny belt there in front of him. Big year ahead for him. But Michael, your chance, the right to reply again. You know, you're, you're 30 now, 5 and 1, but again, it's a hometown fight. It's It's got everyone talking about this as well. Are you going to steal the show, you two lads? 
Yeah, I think yeah, I think the clash the clash of stars is really gonna uh, bring some fireworks to the show. John's a good fight. I'm expecting a really tough fight, but I've trained really hard. Probably it's the hardest I've ever trained, and this fight is coming at just the right time for me. So I'm about to show everyone what I'm about. Um, with two fellas that know each other, is it a case of respect? Is it needle? You try and try and tell us exactly how it's going to pan out on the night. Um, there's no needle between me and Jordan. There's nothing, nothing been said. I got respect for him as a fighter. I don't know him personally, so I can't really comment on that. But it's just business at the end of the day. I'm coming the 28th of March, I'm coming there to win. Put everything on the line, do it, whatever it takes to win. And as you are too, but. Coventry men and again the fan bases will be there and you both have your supporters there and, and again what's it going to be like in terms of trying to, to bring the boxing like you with Coventry needs hometown fighters obviously if, if boxing is going to keep coming here yeah definitely and it needs some entertainment fights we've got the platform just need to perform now I think it's about time big time boxing come back to Coventry it's been about 10 12 years now and there's a massive fan base here Tell you now, when the big shows get rolled in, you're going to see the fan base pour in. I can guarantee you that. Well, Ishmael Ellis, Sean Cooper, that's another one in the lightweight division as well that we're looking forward to. It's Birmingham against Wolves. So I'll start with you, Sean. What, what's what's going to happen on this one? And again, it's another intriguing one in terms of you know the, the two records, two similar records. You're 10 and 1, obviously, you're facing Ishmael, who's 11 and 2, and both with your own ambition. So, again, somewhat firstly, the opportunity live on Channel 5, and then what we can expect come fight night. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm grateful to be on this uh, big show again. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a good fight, 50-50. Ishmael is good, but I'll put everything into the training. A new trainer, new ideas, new things. It's working great, and I think come 28th of March, you'll see a different me. And likewise, right to reply then. Uh, <laughs> it's just, well, I was going to say, it's, it's, not, it's not coming to the room yet. It's right, okay, but obviously, we're looking at this now, if you've got all the, the, the kind of you believe the tools to get the job done and again you have to try and make a statement here again and what is it is the kind of in terms of Birmingham, Walsall and, and that kind of part of the West Midlands what is it like rivalry wise? Um, yeah I don't have no rival against uh, Ishmael it's got mutual respect but I think come fight nights it's going to be different so I'm going to be this is all I've got I've got to put everything onto this to get to the next step so you know I've trained really hard for this and I've put everything in so I'm going to come out and win. But also on the bill, I mentioned obviously some of the fighters. We've got Danny Quartermain here from Leamington as well, who's got a big opportunity. Just starting out in the pro ranks as well, but a really seasoned amateur. And again, I know that, that Danny, you know, you feel that there's great times ahead for you. This will be your second fight, but you've got lots of experience fighting lads from the GB setup and everything else. So, what are you going to show on the night? Obviously, um, I'm an experienced amateur. Um, starting off, obviously, fresh in the pro game, so it's a whole new uh, level for me. But um, I'm looking forward to getting a few fights under my belt, looking to go for six, eight rounds. Those aren't only from the amateurs, now I've got a great engine on me, so I'm just going to showcase that for all these fights. Look forward to that. Now, moving on to the top table, and of course, the main event. Before we get to that, we do have Sam Eggington. And Sam, you've been on a, something of a, a winning streak, of course, since the, the blip against Liam Smith. You've got that belt in front of you as well. Still just 26, the Savage, even though it seems that you've been around forever. How are you feeling these days? I feel good, mate, yeah. Um, like you say, there's been a, a little blip, but, uh, you know, the, no, nothing changes. You know, we get back in the gym, train, um, and we want to win the next fight. And every time, you know, there, is, there has been a little blip and people start, you know, people start thinking maybe, you know, it's time, time to pack it in. You know, we, we turn up and have a, a big win, you know, and win titles. So, you know, this is just another one of them. We're gonna, want to come in, um, get this kid out of the way um, and move on. And you have grown into the light middleweight division now, obviously yeah. you were killing yourself at Welter and now, uh, do you feel now at 26, and again I, I keep mentioning the age because it does seem crazy how, how young you still are after achieving so much and we know your story, you thought you were going to be a journeyman then you, you started winning, yeah. you started getting serious and then you started winning belts, Commonwealth titles, all the rest of it, we can see what you got in front of you there. So again, you still feel that the best is still to come now that you've grown into that weight and you, you feel happier at that weight? Yeah, 100%. Like you say, I'm 26. Um, if anything, I'm coming to my prime. Um, you know, the people that moan about the losses are the same people that moan about there's no 50-50 fights. And when you do take them, um, people moan when you lose. So, 
it's just it, people are always going to have their you know opinion. You know, I'm 26. I'm coming into my prime. I'm growing into the weight. You know, quite well. Um, and like I say, this would be you know a very good year. Bit of a throwback fighter. Your trainer John Pegg, Would you agree with that? Yeah, Sam's just really easy to work with. He wants to fight. He doesn't let it get him down. When like you know, if you have 10 50 50s, you're going to lose a couple of them. But he just learns off them. Comes back a better fighter. It's just. It's just a way of going forward, and Sam boxing on a show like this in Coventry on terrestrial TV. Again, it's just Sam taking his chances when they come, getting ready to go. Same as all the lads here. When we talk to Michael Green and Jordan Cook and Ishmael Ellis and, and Sean Cooper, you think that they might be like, oh, that's a bit of a tricky one. Can I get them? Like, no, no, that's great. That's the kind of fight I want. My fans will love it, and I'm ready to fight. And that's what I make for a good show. You know, you don't have to have huge titles on every fight. If they're good, well matched fights, Boxing fans appreciate them, and people are really appreciating the fact that local lads are prepared to fight each other on the other card, as well as a, a great top of the bill. So, what more can you ask for? Well, beautifully leads me to the top of the bill, uh, and as you're talking about Sam, then we'll get your thoughts, obviously, about the Pharaoh alongside me to my right, but we'll start with Chad Sugden, trainer, father, Dean alongside you there. Now, Dean, just give us an insight in case... Uh, an opportunity now. We know that obviously Craig Richards was due to fight. It was a, a, a different situation. But again, we just heard John about taking opportunities. You know, sum, sum it up now for, for, for your lad here. We, we've only ever known 50-50 fights. You know, we come from a kickboxing background. Everybody knows that. Um, but we've been involved in boxing for many years too. You know, Chad boxed as an amateur from the age of 11 um, alongside kickboxing. Um, but in the kickboxing world, it's very different. You know, every fight's a challenge and uh, when I say 50-50 we've, we've been the underdog on many occasions throughout his whole career um, but we thrive on that we, we, we thrive on having real fights that's that's what we've been brought up on and that's that's why we're here so uh, this is a great opportunity it's a great challenge and uh, yeah, I believe it's a 50-50 fight um, may the best man win well obviously the draw with Craig Richard shows that Chad it belongs in a steam company but in terms of training and taking a fight relatively late how, how's that worked well when we got a phone call asking if we'd fight on the undercard, um, there was a, a strong feeling in the world of boxing that uh, we might lose uh, Craig Richards, and uh, that, that feeling came true. So for us to train for a six-round fight and not a 12-round fight when we felt that was a possibility it would have been stupid. So we'd been preparing for 12 rounds right from the beginning, even when we were offered the six-rounder. So when that phone call actually came in, it, you know, it wasn't, oh my God, we better start training for 12. We, we were already training for 12. And uh, yeah, we, we, we've left no stone on turn. We've had good preparation for this fight, so we'll be in the best shape ever. Well, like was to John, because obviously again, when you're training and you're preparing for a certain opponent and then that falls through, you've got to adapt as well. It, you know, obviously they want to take their opportunity. How do you keep Shaq out on the straight and narrow in terms of concentrating, focusing on a different job, a different opponent? To be fair, uh, that's Paul Cunahan's job. I work with Paul, but Paul's Shaqan's trainer. I manage him and we work together in the gym and stuff. But Paul was already planning for that. As, uh, as Dean said, there was kind of a feeling that uh, Richard might not box for whatever reason. So Paul was looking at the guys who, who he knew was ready to fight. And he was already keeping it, the sparring kind of quite open. And Paul was already planning ahead, as Dean says. So, to be fair, Paul had already got that in, into place. And he'd already got, it, got ready that there might be a change. Again, he anticipated there might be a change. And he put a training regime and a plan into place for that. So, we won't turn around and say, oh, the, the opponent changed. Because like Chad... We had a feeling, so we've been getting ready for a different op opportunity as well. So, again, Shaq will be ready, same as Chad's just said, he's going to be ready. 50-50 fight, would you go along with that? It's a, gr it's a great fight. Um, yeah, it's as close as 50-50 as can be, because Craig Richards and Shaq was a 50-50 fight, and Chad drew me, Craig Richards. So, yeah, it's a 50-50 fight. It's two young guys wanting to win the title, basically. And Chad then... We know about your kickboxing background, and, and again, yeah. people from that background tend to be tough characters. Uh, yeah. you, you, I suppose you felt pain in a different way that you do in a boxing ring, but does that mean that nothing phases you when it comes to your boxing career now? Uh, I think if I said nothing phases me, then I won't be getting ready like I am for the fight. Uh, obviously, Shakan's a good, good fighter, and I'm looking forward to putting my skills on, on show on the night, to be honest, and 
I'm not worried about the fight. It's we both have to meet the same way. Everyone's like, oh, he's six foot six. I'm like, he makes light heavy just like I do. So what he gains in height, I believe I gain in other areas, and it's a good fight. You mentioned that we've seen you stand together. There, there is the obvious, I suppose, the, the advantages, the, the long levers, all the rest of it. So, uh, you know, without giving your game plan away, how do you win this fight? Uh, like I win every other fight. Like I adapt to every time I fight, I fight someone different. And I believe my experience in, I've been fighting since I was seven years of age in martial arts and other combat sports. It, get, it runs in my blood, and like that's what I do. So uh, on the night, I find a way to win. We've been training for Shaq now. We knew he was always going to be in the pipeline because I couldn't see anyone else beating him up to this level. So uh, yeah, we'll be, we're, we're ready for it. And um, when Craig Richards pulled out, he gave me the opportunity in December. He's done me another favour. He gave me a shot at the British title. So do you know what I mean? I can't take anything away from Richards. He's he's given me my opportunity, and um, uh, it's going to be a pleasure to get in there on Channel Five on Terrestrial TV and showcase my skills. And do you feel there's no pressure on you, given what's happened? Uh, the pressure's all put on by yourself. Um, I, like people can put pressure from the outside, but no one knows what it actually takes to get in there. Except for these boys sat in front of me and myself and Shakan and Sam. So I um, I'm looking forward to it. And diamonds are made under high pressure. Do you know what I mean? So I believe I I perform better the bigger the stage. And uh, I, can, I wish to prove that on March 28th. You don't come much prettier than these belts either, do they? Mate, it's the best belt in the world. It's, uh, yeah. Obviously, you've got the world titles and stuff like that, but that belt there is what every British boxer wants, so. Well, Shaq, I'll ask you, because obviously we've heard from John in terms of preparations, uh, how's it been refocusing the mind, if you like, from Craig to Chad? Uh, Preparation's been uh, brilliant. We've had a brilliant camp in Dubai, um, even down here in our gym. You know, our gym's always thriving. But um, it's something because professionals, we've got to get used to, you know, um, these things happen, a bit of opponents change, and you've got to learn to adapt. I've learned to adapt from, um, you know, throughout all my fights, really. I've had changes before, and um, we kind of had inkling again, um, as John was saying, um, that, you know, Craig was going to pull out the fight, and that's what's happened. Chad's a worthy opponent, he stepped in, fair play to him. Um, but I believe, like I said, it's a fight that I'm going to win and my skill's going to prevail and everyone will see again. Now you're 13 and I know, and it's a really good domestic division as well. I mean, there are other fights being made. If you are to get the better of Chad, get your hands on that. I suppose that's going to open up all sorts of doors for you. We, we see fights like Anthony Yard uh, and Lyndon Arthur, which is a, a, another fantastic clash. You, you want to be king of the domestic crew first and foremost, you get that, that's, the, that's exactly where you'll be, that's the case isn't it? Of course, I mean the main focus, you know, I can't look past March 28th as I say, you know, Chad's a tough opponent, he's coming from a fighting background, he's going to obviously, you know, give his all, um, given this opportunity, um, but that bout's going to be around my waist, March 28th, my hands are going to be getting raised, and that's what I've got to say about that. We mentioned the size difference before, again, and, and likewise, you're not going to tell me too much in terms of what you intend to do, but again, what kind of problems will that pose, a totally different kind of fighter that you're going to face, and, and again, you have that massive height advantage? The thing is for me, a lot of people take into account my height, and they look, you know, and say, oh, this a tall fighter, and, you know, obviously they approach it more or less similar, feeling that, okay, this guy is just a tall guy, it's huge range, but I've got many answers to my game. Um, you know, for me, I've fought someone on, you know, like Chad's height and, you know, skill set, whatever. Has he faced someone who's 6'6 six, six with my skill set? I highly doubt it. But um, as I said, you know, come March 28th, always going to be shown. Um, and like, like I said, my skills will prevail. Everyone will see it on the night and it will be a good display of boxing for myself. Well, ladies and gents, uh, all the fighters here will be available for one-on-one -on -one interviews now for anyone that would like to talk to them. But obviously this is live on Channel 5, the Sky Dome Coventry, big time boxing, championship boxing, returning to this city, just ahead of the City of Culture 2021 as well, so perfect timing. Of course it is Hennessy Sports in association with John Pegg and Eastside Boxing in association with Lab Books and Infinitum, live on Channel 5. And don't forget as well, tickets available from the venue, from Hennessy Sports and also from the fine gentlemen that are here in the room as well. 
So if you'd like to take your opportunity to speak to the fighters, then you can do so. I think we're going to have, as the table breaks up, if we can just ask Jordan and Michael to stay behind for a quick head-to-head -head as well. And the rest, thank you very much indeed for your attention. We look forward to a fantastic night of boxing on March the 28th right here in Coventry. Thank you.